Welcome everybody to another edition of TW2020 with WCW2003 as we're at the Go Home Show for Wrestle War. As since it's the first pay-per-view of the year, it's kind of a quick um, lead up because, you know, Starcade's on the last Sunday of the year. Pay-per-views are usually on the third Sunday of the year, putting aside a couple. So, you know, this is sort of like a, a quick turn turnaround time. But here we go. Let's get rolling with the last Nitro before Wrestle War and see what happens. Um, first today, another, you know, test match for Monty Brown, uh, who's, you know, on my dev fed, um, currently the NWA world champion, which is interesting. Anyway, Monty Brown goes over Sterling James Keenan in 6015 by pinfall with the pounce. So that's gets to 42, as we're in beautiful College Station, Texas. And in a tag match of putting some people who don't have matches tonight, um, in the ring, we got Ray Jr., Dustin Rhodes, and Fit Hintley defeating Kaz and America's Most Wanted in 1447 when Ray Jr. pinned Chris Harris with the Mystery of Rana. Um, so, decent pre match, gets a 69, there you go. Um, so, we go ahead and basically we open the show with the four horsemen arriving. So, you know, Canyon, Waller, Jarrett, Douglas, um, and, and, well, okay, actually not Flair. So actually we'll see them like, you know, Ric Flair. Yeah, well, as they come out, you know, they mentioned that, you know, Ric Flair's already at the, you know, at the after party because he doesn't have anything to do tonight. But, you know, we're here to cause him trouble. So Booker T and Ray come up along with Tori Wilson. Some yelling goes along, you know, uh, since Lawler struggles, say, you know, Lawler says something weird and off-putting, you know, says, you know, yells at like Ray Jr., I I'm bigger than you, Pips Week. You know, it looks like there's about to be a rumble, even though the baby faces are down two to three when Bischoff shows up and, like, and says, like, okay, look, 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 I can't have any trouble tonight. I got a four-way match for the number one contendership. I've got Goldberg. <sighs> look, none of you wrestling tonight. We already we already officially signed Ray Jr. versus Jeff Jarrett for the U.S. title. We already got Booker and Canyon. You're good for the number one contenders match. All of you, go home. Ray Jr., go Go train, uh, Booker, do whatever you do, Horseman, go party with Flair, you know, have fun, but you're not here tonight, okay? You're gone. Get out of here. So that opens up the show and basically writes off all these guys because I had no space for them, really. Again, the downside, like, I'm really getting to understand why maybe WCW had two A shows or why, w why WWE went to three hours because, yeah, because it's hard to get everybody on TV. I mean, it's hard to get everybody on TV enough during a cycle to make sure they're actually putting forth their stories. Anyway, this this gets a 90 because everybody did really well. And then we go to the opening match, which is a number one contenders match for the Cruiserweight title. So uh, Scott Tyler, Scott Taylor defeats Paul London, Blitzkrieg, and Chavo Jr. in 647 was when Taylor pins Chavo Jr. with the jumping bulldog. So again, back and forth match. Uh... Announcers mentioned Paul Lund is, is one of the rising, you know, young wrestlers on the in, in, independent scene, getting his chance here in front of millions, um, on you know, on Nitro. But you know, he does a qu quick flip, dies for your sins. Taylor gets the win. This gets a 63. All well, uh, Morningstar is basically at ringside, you know, with his title. So afterwards, uh, Morningstar comes in, tries to attack. Um, you know, goes for the angel wings. You know, attacks Taylor from behind, goes to the angel wings. Taylor Taylor flips out. And actually drop kicks Morningstar to the outside. Um, and then there's a standoff as we go to the back. So this gets a 48. You know, not, not too bad. You know. And then there's the Deadpool backstage. And, you know, Missy is being scary. Lestat is acting like Lestat. And Vampir is like... Vampir is like... There are still many names on the... On... You know, on our list, and tonight another one will fall. Lex Luger, you can talk all you want about your many accomplishments, but the truth is now you're a dead man, and there's nothing you can do about it. So just accept your fate, it'll be better for everyone involved. Uh, so this gets a 73, solid stuff. So we come back from Marshall, and yeah, in a match that had good, good heat and decent wrestling, uh, Macias defeats Lex Luger by, by, in 610 by pinfall with the Crucifix Powerbomb. This is just. You know, this is Luger getting a hot start right at the beginning, but Missy is coming back and just, like, throwing him around, wrecking him. Just absolutely wrecking the guy. Um, and he eventually gets the pin, like, right in the middle of the ring. Like, clean, no interference, just Missy wins. Uh, so this gets the 66. And then afterwards, uh, basically what happens is... Um, Macias, like, goes to, like, just eliminate Luger. Like, just another Crucifix powerbomb. Went out of sudden, out of nowhere. 
Macho Man Randy Savage, who hasn't been seen in months since he lost to Shauna Hare, jumps in the ring, like just turns Lestat around, punches him, knocks him, knocks him down. Uh, Macias drops him. He gets him into a brawl with Macias. Vampiro comes and tries to attack. Macias fights him off. Um, and, you know, he basically, the Deadpool eventually back down because they're more surprised than anything. And then it's like, okay, okay, look, look, we don't, you know, they eventually back off and, Mace, and Macho Man just acts like the Macho Man. And there you go. Uh, then we have a backstage promo after, like, after all the chaos stops. And Billy Kidman's like, why, why did I attack Ravia? Damn, why did I cost him a, a world title shot? Why not? Why not? Look, the only person I care about is Billy Kidman. And if somebody like Ravi and Dam is in the way, so be it. You know, and if he wants a match with me at Russell War, like he's been complaining about, fine. I already took care of people who thought he was stars like they could walk in and stars like him before. I've been WCW for nearly a decade. I'm the foundation of WCW, whether people in the back or the idiots in the crowd like it. I've been a Cruiserweight champion. I've been a US champion. I've been every champion you can be except the top one, and that'll come soon enough. Um, now it's the Jerry and Borash asked where Misty went, and Billy Kidman's like, Misty's a free woman. She can do whatever she wants. You know, so she's not around right now. Maybe she'll be around again. Maybe she won't. Maybe I'll have somebody new on my arm. Who knows? What's more important is Rob Van Dam. You can do whatever you want, but you'll still end up flat on your back thanks to the Kid Crusher. 72, solid heel promo. Here we go. And then we're backstage, and Gene Orkin is like, Randy Savage, we have not seen you in months, and you suddenly come back to save Lex Luger and fight against that monster Macias. And I was like, Gene Oakland, you have to understand, brother. The macho man. He does not stand for this. And it doesn't matter. I feel the madness. Oh, yeah. So, Macias, you think you can walk around and take out anybody you want? Well, you may have wrestled Sting. You may have wrestled Luger. But you have not really stepped into the ring with a true crazy man like me. You maybe throw some face paint on or anything else, but oh yeah. So take me on, brother. Take me on. Take on the madness. And Savage walks away. So here we go. Fort Wrestle War. We'll pre book that match. And uh, that's going to be Macias versus the Macho Man. There you go. And that's 75 because it was, it was short. Savage is good. There you go. Um, then we have our th three-way match determined the number one contender for the women's title where uh, Lexi James is at ringside. I mean, not Lexi James, but uh, but 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 the, the actual women's world champion whose name I'm all of a sudden blanking on. Angel Fox. There we go. Yeah. Jesus. Anyway, in a match, this is just back and forth, but in the end, like, Beth Phoenix and Gail Kim are so, like, obsessed with each other that, basically, Phoenix knocks Gail Kim out to the outside of the ring, and as she's celebrating, she doesn't notice Lexi James behind her. Quick roll-up, pulls the tights, gets the pinfall, and now she's number one contender for the women's world title. Decent match, again, especially, like, remember, the Southwest matches that we were having in the Southwest were basically boosted by the fact that the dev, women's dev fed is there, hadn't been there for about two years, or a year, rather. So then, you know, Lexi comes down, she faces off with Angel, she points to the belt, Angel, you know, acts cool and collected, and we just stare down as we go as we go to the back. So that gets a 51, not too bad. And then we're backstage, and Scott Steiner cuts a Scott Steiner promo, says, I'm the big baddie booty daddy. I'm a former world champion. I still should be a world champion. It doesn't matter. Just conspiracies. They don't want the big bad booty daddy, the man with the largest arms in the world. The man who makes all the freaks is there scream with delight. The world champion again. They want their safe world champions. They're even okay with they're even okay with somebody like Kane but they're not down with big bad duty champion world champion, but does it matter? I'm gonna rip through three geeks tonight and then at Russell War, just gonna be Goldberg will at the end will be me and you in a cage, and I'll walk out with the world champion once again. 84, because Steiner is still really good. 
And then we have a six-man tag match where basically to set up, this is just a tag title preview with one other, two other guys in there because I need to do a six-man. And this gets a 76 because it's six real good guys. Well, five real good guys in Air Paris or four real good guys in Air Paris and Reno. Anyway, Lance Storm and Silver City Rollers defeated Yoshiro Tashiri and Air Raid in 1055 when Reno pinned Air Paris while using the ropes for love. Well, let's just say when Reno pinned Air Paris after whacking with the chair or the title belt. Because, yeah, Paris doesn't hold the ropes. Anyway, um, Chiri got a 58, Style 71, Paris 62, Storm 73, Cash 67, Reno 56. Solid stuff. Even though Air, Air Paris was off his game. And then basically Silver City Rollers make belt motions while the Air Raid is in the ring. This gives a 62. Not too bad. Uh, then basically, out of nowhere, we have Disco Music Hits and Outlaw Disco Fever. And Disco Fever is like... It's been too long since Disco has been back in WCW Nitro, so I'm going to call out anybody in the back and show that Disco Inferno deserves a shot to be on Nitro. And then, done. Done, done. I don't know. I, I can't do Glorious Beasts, but you all know it. Crowd pops. Disco freaks out. And there we go. 65. And in a six-minute match, because, you know, where four minutes of is Disco basically running and stalling, and then Disco at the end kills disco like this is like this like i can hear like disco running around like maybe getting like one like sort of like like he slips in from behind while goldberg's in the ring hits him like in the back once he immediately goes for like like the chart buster or something goldberg no sells it spear jackhammer pinfall 76 so as goldberg is celebrating all of a sudden we have awesome attacking from behind you know, see, he attacks him from behind. He is going for the awesome bomb, but out of nowhere, here comes Chuck Palumbo. Palumbo saves awesome, throws him off, and then after a moment, you know, they throw awesome in the back, and then there's a stare down between Palumbo and Goldberg, where, you know, Goldberg simply nods, Palumbo points to the belt, Goldberg taps it, and then walks away. And there you go. We get an 87, because, yeah, there you go. And then. We move on to a RVD backstage promo where, Kit, where RVD is like, dude, like I don't get your problem, Kidman. Like you had one hot girl, then you had to change her for another one. You pissed off the guy who'd been your best friend for years. Who's a really cool, dude. Like, what's your major malfunction? I mean, I don't care. Like, here's the thing, bro. Hopefully, I'm not gonna have to deal with you. I'm gonna be walking into that big old cage and I'm gonna walk out to the world champion because I'm Rob. Van Dam. But if by some notion I'm not the world champion, I'll fight at Wrestle War. I don't care. Let's do this. And he walks away, 69, because it's our Van Dam doing promo. So, you know, not perfect. So then we're off to the main event, which doesn't do as good as like other main events, but it's still a really solid match. Scott Steiner defeats Rob Van Dam, Sean O'Hare, and Shane Helms in 1501 when Steiner submitted RVD with a Steiner recliner after an interference for Billy Kidman. So basically what I imagine happening is like, again, four-way brawl to end things, um, and just do every, everybody did pretty well in the signer, and at the end, Billy Kidman comes in, hits Ravity with the Kid Crusher again, but, no, actually, no, here's what I imagine, as Kidman comes in, interferes, but Ravity is actually fighting him off, but that allows Scott Signer to come from behind, wall him with a pipe or something, knock him out, and then slap on the Steiner recliner, and there you go, Steiner's in uh, the main event. And then Steiner is celebrating, and then here comes the brawl starting. So, you know, RVD recovers, goes after Kidman, Sean O'Hare is yelling at Steiner, then out comes Awesome to attack O'Hare, Palumbo comes out to save, then here comes Bill Goldberg, spears for everybody, and a big old brawl to end the show. Not quite as good as, like, other stuff because we don't have, like, the super entertaining people, but still a good solid way to end, you know, the go-home show. So this, again, this gets an 83, so not as good as our, like, our, our past couple shows, but still a really solid go-home show. Um, let's see what Raw does, which will probably include a random 99 from another random match, because that's all they, like, seem to be able to do, which, you know, great for them. But let's see here. Uh, oh, yeah. Also, um, Noah had their first big show, so I'll show you guys what they did um, after we go over Raw and everything else. And yeah, I need to figure out what to do with Misty because I did just sign her to a huge contract. I'm not even sure why I did that when I, I already knew she had bad but chemistry with folks. 
I mean, worst case, I can just throw her down to the dev vet and maybe she'll learn to work or maybe she'll get more charismatic or whatever. Um, so, okay. Blah, blah, blah. WCW marked a Raw's war. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see here. Um, okay, obviously she turned you down, Johnny. Jesus. And obviously you guys are fucking. I mean, <laughs> okay, that's just mean to me. Um, but anyway, let, let's look at Raw. So Austin defeated Regal, Shawn Michaels defeated Raven, Kurt Angle and Scott Hall defeated Dudley Boys, Undertaker defeated Matt Hardy, Brock Lesnar and Billy Gunn defeated Jeff Hardy and Rikishi, blah, 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 blah. Okay. Um, and again, just to show things real quick. So if we go to companies, we go to Noah. So Noah had their first big show. So if we pull that up, where? Oh, right, they're pro wrestling Noah. So if we look at their profile, if we look at their show history, their first big show of the year, um, main evented by Misawa defeating Ogawa, Kawada defeating Kikuchi, Tawe and Takayama defeated Hama and Kimura, and Pressure Drop, which is um, Aikida and Kanemuro, defeating Saito and Farafuji to retain the tag titles, then some other stuff on the end card, including Steve Blackman wrestling and future longtime Noah guy Zugaria on the opening. Um, nothing else has really much happened. Uh, WWE created a weird stable, which I might have to actually mess with and see if it's actually decent or not. Oh yeah, I'll just show you it. I don't know if I'm at, like I might do some in-game editing just to do with it, just in case it makes no sense. But uh, we have for WWE we have profile stables. We have. Yeah, these are the two I, I created because they like were teams, people that were teaming a lot, and it made sense. But now we have this uh, small faction put together with Steve Austin. It's Austin as the leader, Raven as a deputy, and then Bradshaw as Farouk as also as members. Which, because Austin's it's a, like a top heel and Raven's sort of weirdly and the ATV are they, they they like weirdly make sense. I'm still not sure if I'm good. I might rename them because that name is terrible. But you know, aside from that, I actually don't mind it. Um, but anyway, that's all for now. So um, the next thing you'll see is Russell War, which, you know, is being made evident by the four-way cage match, cage heat match between Goldberg, Palumbo, Awesome, and Scott Steiner. We've got Booker versus Kane with the number one contendership on the line, Ray Jr. defending the uh, U.S. title against Jeff Jarrett, Ari defending the tag titles against um, Silver City Rollers. We've got Robin and Dam supposedly taking on Billy Kidman. We've got a women's match between the new women's world champion, Angel Fox, and Lexi James, or as you better know them, Angelina Love and uh, Mickey James. And um, I think that's all the big match. Oh, we have Macias versus Randy Savage. And yeah, I mean, those are the big matches. There'll be other stuff on the card. Oh, and Morningstar defending the, the, the Cruiserweight title against Scott St Taylor. Um, but, you know, putting that aside, um, you know, that'll be up next. So again, if you're enjoying this, go ahead and give it a comment on what you're liking or not liking. Uh, you know, give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more fun TW 2020 content. Uh, talk to you later and adios.